So there's currently a lot of fear in the market from inflation to supply chain issues to low potential returns over the next decade. And they're leading to articles like this where experts say the 4% rule, a popular retirement income strategy, is outdated. So the plans for this video is to go over why exactly experts say the 4% rule is outdated, see what the projections are over the next decade for the stock market, and see what you can do about it. And as always, if you guys enjoy the content, leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel, helps me out a lot, and it's greatly appreciated. All right, so the 4% rule is meant to yield a consistent stream of annual income and give seniors a high degree of comfort that their funds will last over a 30-year retirement. Simply, the rule says retirees can withdraw 4% of the total value of their investment portfolio in the first year of retirement, and then the dollar amount increases each year with inflation. However, market conditions, namely lower projected returns for stocks and bonds, don't seem to be working in retirees' favor. Given market expectations, the 4% rule may no longer be feasible. And it argues that these days, the 4% rule should be the 3.3% rule instead. And if we come over to this article by Morningstar, we can see what those projected returns are over the next decade. So here we can see companies like BlackRock, JP Morgan, and Vanguard giving their projections. And we can see that for US equities, all of these companies are given the annual returns at a very low figure, around 5%. Vanguard is only 3.7 to 5.7% returns per year. And if this pans out to be true, this is going to be a huge departure from what a lot of people are currently used to. I mean, over the past one year, the S&P 500 went up 29%. So going from this to 3 to 5% per year is going to be a massive change in the market. Now, this article from Vanguard gives some reasons and insights into why this might be the case. Why today's valuation expansion limits future U.S. equity returns. Just as low valuations during the global financial crisis supported U.S. equities' solid gains through the decade that followed, today's high valuations suggest a far more difficult climb in the decade ahead. The big gains of recent years make similar gains tomorrow that much harder to come by unless fundamentals also change. So essentially the argument being laid out here is that the valuation of the U.S. equity markets is way too overextended right now, and because of that, future returns are going to be limited because we already have them. It was pulled forward. And having additional price appreciation over the next decade is going to be really difficult because earnings have to catch up to the valuation. Now, this is a chart of the S&P 500 earnings per share, or EPS, and we can see that they have been exploding. Companies are making more today than they ever have before. So to me, this isn't an issue of earnings and companies not being able to make enough revenue. Rather, it's just the valuation that the stock market has right now. If we look at the S&P 500 price to earnings ratio, it's near an all-time high even as earnings is increasing. And that's why so many articles are predicting that the next decade is going to have subpar returns because the earnings of companies is going to have to catch up to their current valuations. Even the Wells Fargo security head of equity strategy is predicting that Wall Street will stage a vibrant year-end rally and then see losses in 2022. He's quoted as saying, you're going to bring equities to a level that they can't sustain. So we all know the stock market returns over the previous decade was essentially something like this. It was straight up and to the right for the most part. The issue is many people are predicting that the fair value is something more like this down here. So this blue dotted line indicates the actual earnings growth of the companies in the market. And there's just a huge disconnect right now between the valuation and those earnings. And because of that, over the next decade, the valuations of these companies is going to have to flatline a little bit until the earnings catch up to the insane valuations that the stocks are currently at. And that's going to ultimately cause subpar returns over the next say, decade. That's why if we come over to this article, which is titled, What is a Bear Market and How Should I Invest During One? It says things like dollar cost averaging, diversification, which is always important, but the main things it says here are dividend paying stocks and bonds. Now, focusing on bonds first, there's kind of an issue when it comes to buying bonds right now, and it's highlighted by this article, ignoring interest rate moves. So interest rates and bond prices have an inverse relationship with one another. As rates go up, bond prices decline and vice versa. So the best time to buy a bond is when interest rates are very high. And if we look at the 10 year treasury, Currently, interest rates are at an all-time low, so it's a very poor time to buy bonds according to most people. So that leaves us with dividend-paying stocks. This article is what happens to dividends during recessions and bear markets. So dividends have historically been much less volatile than stock prices. So this is a chart of the S&P 500 dividend growth from 1900 to 2018. And we can definitely see some fluctuations to the up and the downside. But if we compare this versus the next chart, which is the S&P 500 change in price from the same time, 
time period, we can see much greater fluctuations. And keep in mind the y-axis has a different scale in this chart. But this chart is probably the most revealing. So this is every recession and bear market in recent history, along with the peak S&P 500 decline during these periods and the S&P 500 dividend change. And the average over all these bear markets is that the S&P 500 declines 31% and the dividend change is negative almost 2%. So quite a difference here. And the reason behind this is super simple. So we're looking at Johnson & Johnson right now. Over the past five years, these are the price fluctuations of the company. It happens to be up 41% over this time period, but this is just the valuation that people put on the company. Now in comparison, over that same time period, this is the dividend history of Johnson & Johnson. And we can see how stable it is in comparison and growing over time. And of course, the reason for that is because unlike the valuation, the dividends at Johnson & Johnson pays out is directly tied to the earnings and profitability of the company itself. So in terms of total revenue, Johnson & Johnson is growing that by roughly 6% per year. And the growth rate in the dividend that they pay out also happens to be about 6% per year. And the stock price of Johnson & Johnson in the past one year went up 11.38%. So this is just another example of how valuation is currently getting way far ahead of the actual earnings of the underlying assets. And in this situation of being in an overvalued market potentially, dividends are way more grounded and stable. So to summarize, this is the current situation. Companies' earnings are at an all-time high, which is a great sign for the economy. The issue is the valuations have far outpaced that earnings growth. And the analysis of the situation is that additional price appreciation might be limited and unsupported by earnings. However, dividend payments are independent of valuations that people put on stocks, and they are connected directly to earnings of a company. Now coming back to these projections of the market over the next decade, Take all this with a huge grain of salt, even though they're coming from big names like BlackRock and JP Morgan, most likely they are extremely wrong. Historically speaking, that is their track record. The only thing we know for sure is that valuations are going up faster than the earnings of the underlying equities. But of course, anything could change and nobody knows what's gonna happen over the next decade. And that's why diversification is such an important thing in investing. And if I come to my portfolio, I have an even split between growth and income assets. I do personally have a conviction that the returns over the next decade are going to be a lot less than the previous decade, but that's just a hunch. I have no idea what's actually going to happen, and that's why I hedge my bets in my own portfolio by investing in all kinds of equities. To me, as long as the asset has a bright future and has a modest valuation in the current moment, I do not mind dollar cost averaging into that position. So that's my strategy, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the current situation and what you're doing in your portfolio. If you guys are still watching and enjoy, definitely give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, all the YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.